What's up guys, Dennis here. Another video for you. Step into my office, take a walk with me. Today's video is about staying in your strength zones. Super important. You know, there's a lot of, uh, it's been said a lot, you know, you want to work on your weaknesses and, and that sort of thing, right? And that's terrible advice because the reality is there's going to be a lot more things that you're not good at than those that you are, right? Um, and I want to bring up an, an example I heard many years ago. I think it's, uh, I think it's John Maxwell that said it. Um, he mentioned staying in your shun zones and he had a unique uh, example um, and he mentioned that you know you're either going to be if you're good at something you're going to be a 10 right on a scale of 1 to 10 you're going to be a 10 the best you can be is a 10 and the worst is a 1 right and he said by nature you know some people are better at certain things than others right we know that but he said it's so important to stay in the zones and the areas um, where you're naturally good at right because he said if you are let's say you're a, a three let's say we'll call it basketball right let's say by nature you're a three um, and you spend your life practicing many years practicing and trying to get better at basketball he said in your lifetime you could probably move up you know three or four points on that scale um, and he said and it's so critical to stay in your strength zones because if you spend your entire life or many years of your life trying to get better at this thing that you're a three at you know at the end of the day when it's all said and done you might be a six right and you're gonna get paid right and you'll be as effective as what a, a six is in the marketplace he said but if you're like a four and a five um, in an area in your life and you have particular skill sets that are natural to you and then over many years you work on those and you move up three or four points you know, you could do really well because you're going to get paid what that point is in 7 or 8 or a 9 or a 10, what that's worth in the marketplace. And it's so important because we can easily get involved with things and invest in things that ultimately is not in our strength zones. And this is so key to know so that you can reflect on what it is that you do, where do you spend most of your time, what do you, what do you, know, what do you do for a living. And that sort of stuff because you can go down the wrong the wrong path and spend many years there and be ineffective right because you're never gonna compete with someone that's you know well, that was better at that you know than you were naturally and then has also spent years investing and working on that particular area and that's critical because you want to start at the highest level as possible and the only way that you can do that is by understanding what you're good at what you're good at naturally and then focusing on those areas and this is critical because you have to have the awareness to know if you're good at something or not and be able to admit to yourself if you're good at something sometimes we want to be good at stuff and it's really not our area of expertise not what we need to be focusing on right that's like Michael Jordan if he wanted to start focusing on tennis he's probably not gonna be that good no matter how good he was at basketball and that's critical because you have to reflect and understand and know yourself to know whether or not you should be focused on a particular area because you can focus in the wrong path for too long and you're going to waste a lot of time and resources and at the end of the day you're not going to be as effective as someone else that was naturally better at that than than you are right so it's critical to go through that process and kind of question yourself and find out who you are what you're good at what you're passionate about and make sure that you're in the right path right because if you're not you're going to be costing yourself a lot of a lot of resources and you might have to then change directions later on later in life and that's going to be very very inefficient so that's critical find out where you think you are on the scale of one to ten um, and be realistic with yourself am i naturally good at this is it something that i you know even without trying you know i i'm interested in and i do well in right and you might be good at stuff that you don't want to do so that's also important to to take into consideration you know I remember in school I was really good at like writing papers and and you know a composition and English classes and stuff and I would skip like like midterms and finals and stuff because my grades are high enough but it wasn't something that I wanted to do I didn't want to write 
papers and stories and all this stuff about topics that I didn't care about. So sometimes you might be good at something that's not what you want to necessarily do, and that's not a bad thing, but as long as you know that, right? But it's more important to know what you're not good at as well, so you don't even touch that area, right? You can skip all that stuff, figure out who you are, what you're interested in, what you're good at naturally, and double down there, right? And stay there, and the things that you don't want to do, pay someone else to do them, right? You can't be good at everything. There's absolutely no... There's not enough time in the world and resources for you to be good at everything. So you have to stay exactly where you need to be and focus like a laser, right? That's absolutely, absolutely critical. That's helped me a lot, uh, just understanding that. And then you can, over time, you just become more and more valuable and effective once you do that. Because now you know that every minute that you spend in that area that's in your strength zones, you're becoming more valuable. You become more confident, you build up authority, and credibility because you're building up this experience and references and and knowledge over time as time passes by right I uh, another thing to to keep in mind as well there may be a lot of people that may, may watch this video or maybe won't even watch this video but they may be in the situation I remember a long time ago when I was younger um, when I was just kind of getting into into working and whatnot I remember I had a uh, I've had three retail jobs in my in my life, right? When I first started working. And then I realized something. Probably after this after I left, I believe like the second the second retail job, I think it was. And I started to realize when I was, you know, applying and that sort of thing that it was obviously easier for me to get another retail job because I already had experience doing that, right? And I would have somewhat of an advantage applying for another retail job. And, you know, I felt a little bit more confident that I could get another retail job because that's, that was my background, the little background that I had. That's what I had at the time, right? And when I was trying to apply for something else, I didn't have that background, so I was at a disadvantage. And what ended up happening was I realized something. that You have to be careful what you start getting yourself into, right? Because I've seen this, you know, plenty of times during that, that time. There's a lot of people that will go from one retail job to the next retail job, the next retail job, and they'll stay in that area because as time passes by, their resume gets built up with these retail positions, and of course it's easier for them to get retail positions. What ends up happening is you stay in that path too long, and then there really is no how much of a way up. And if you spend five, ten years in that area, then that's all your resume says. So once you try to change directions, if you do, but well, then it's going to be difficult because now you have no experience outside of this one area. And it's so key because I realized, hey, if I keep going down this path, all I'm ever going to be able to get is a retail position. If I try to do something else, I'm going to be at a disadvantage, right? In the application process and in the interview process because this is all I've done. And of course, whenever you try to change directions, you're going to, you have to start somewhere, right? You have to, you have to start somewhere. And you're going to start in the beginning. You might not know everything. And you're going to be a beginner at something, right? But it's so critical to start that process earlier and sooner than later. Because if you know, okay, if I've done this for X amount of years and I'm not progressing or this isn't what I want to do or this isn't, wanna, this isn't going to get me what I want, you have, to, you have to pick that up really soon so that you don't spend years just doing something because it's comfortable because that's your background, that's what you know, yet it's not going to get you what you want. And if you go years without realizing that, that's all time that's lost. And that's very, very dangerous. And I caught that very soon. And I realized, hey, if I don't learn something different, I'm not going to be able to get a better job. I won't be able to change fields and directions, right? I'm going to stay here and I'm always going to get paid what this is worth. And that's critical that you have the awareness to pick that up. So right where you are, everyone's in a different place in life, but right where you are, no matter if you're younger or older, you ask yourself, what do I do for a living? What are my passions? What are my hobbies, right? What am I good at? Reflect on what you're doing, what you've been doing for the last 5, 10, 15 years. And make sure that you're in an area that serves you, that there's room for growth in it, and that you can move forward and not get stuck, you know? Because if you're going to spend all that time doing something and not think about it, it's better to think about it in the beginning at least one time go start the right path right 
and then if you don't want to think about it anymore, anymore then you're fine because at least you're on the right path and all the time that goes by after that is going to serve you because you're getting more experience and more wisdom and that sort of thing but don't allow time to pass by without asking yourself that because that is absolutely dangerous you don't want to be older and then trying to change directions and still being confused about what you need to do and how you can increase your value and what problems you still need to solve in your life because you haven't been aware uh, all that time that you weren't being effective, right? That's absolutely, um, absolutely critical. Another huge piece to this um, is make sure that whatever you're doing as a career path, um, that it's something that you can apply across the board or to something else, right? A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll get into a field where they can only they can only practice what they know in that field. And that's that's cool, there's nothing wrong with that. But I always advise and I recommend that you get into a field where you can do what you do at work, outside of work. And this is huge because then you're not fully relying on your job. And then you can also go to work and those hours, eight hours a day that you're spending at your job, it's you're accumulating experience and credibility and knowledge and that sort of stuff and then you can apply that to what you're doing outside of work which is the same exact thing and that's a good place to be when what you do most of the time all like, with all your time is the same thing because when you're doubling down in the right area and this is critical there's tons of jobs out there that you can just for example retail we'll call it we'll continue with the retail example and maybe most people are watching this are not doing retail, or maybe some are, who knows. But this is just an example. If you're doing retail, you can only do retail at a store. You can't get out of your job and go do retail, right? Um, and that's, that's critical to understand and know and question where you are and if you can do certain things with what you do on a daily basis, but outside of work. For example, an accountant can work at a firm, and that person can also you know, do taxes outside of work. That's a good example of something that you can do inside and outside of work. And then you're doubling down, right? Because then all that time you're spending is you're, you're moving forward over time because you're focusing on one area in and outside of work. And that's critical to understand. That helped me out a lot and I realized that early on. And if you feel that you're in a, in a, in a field where you can't necessarily do that, for example, like if you're a doctor, nothing wrong with being a doctor, but you can't be a doctor outside of work, right? Um, and that's important to understand. But if you're not there and you, you don't have that, then I would recommend that you build some skill sets that you can apply and monetize and that over time it's going to benefit you and help you out so that you're not fully reliant on your job. Because what ends up happening is if you have one skill set that you can only apply for eight hours a day, then you're limited to making income in those eight hours, right? When you go to sleep, you're screwed. You're not making any money. When you get out of work and you're off the clock, you're not making any money. So now you're reliant on another business, another platform, and the ability to have to you know, clock into work and you're only getting paid when you work. Even if you want to work more, you can't because you're limited to those eight hours, right? So you're relying on a different platform, someone else's platform, and then you're limited by the amount of hours in a day. And then you don't have any other opportunities that come up that allow you to do stuff outside of work when you want to, right? And add to your income that way and find other opportunities and that sort of stuff. So that's critical to understand. By doing that, you'll release some of the, the reliance on your, on your job so that you know, okay, if I needed to do this, if I needed money pretty quickly or if I needed to save up X amount of money or for whatever, for whatever reason, you know that you can do that because you're now relying on yourself and you're independent from being in a, in a building or something like that where you work and now you can make your money outside of work as well. And that's critical, right? Most people don't think about that. They are good as long as they have another job, but the problem with that is that you're never in, in total control. No matter how good you are, you can only be good in your job's building <laughs> while you're on the clock. What about your clock, right? And that's absolutely, absolutely critical. Um, also, a major piece is to understand that 
that your skill sets are ultimately going to get you what you want. This is, if you get anything out of this video, this is it right here. Uh, I would pay attention to this piece right here. There are a lot of people that have not sat down and visualized what it is that they want. They haven't written down what, they, what their ideal lifestyle would be, what's important to them. They haven't, they haven't done that. And when you don't do that, you don't know if you're even on the path or if you can even get there. It sounds silly, but if you don't know what you want your life to look like, you don't even know the work involved to get there. You don't even know if you're using the right vehicle to get, get you there, right? You might, you, might, you might be in a Ferrari, right? And that might sound nice, and it might look cool, but if you're trying to get to the top of the mountain and you're goes to get on top of the mountain, that Ferrari is going to do you no good. Because that's not the vehicle to get you there, right? And this is critical. Absolutely critical. People do, they'll say, I just got to work hard at it. That's wrong. Because you could drive, you could be the best Ferrari driver, you're still not getting to the top of the mountain. You need a 4x4 Jeep lifted, right, with 36 inch tires that could get through the mud and get out of the, the holes and go over the trees. That's what you need. It's not working hard. So it's absolutely critical that you know exactly what you want your lifestyle to look like. You know exactly what you want. And then when you, when you make that concrete, you can ask yourself without bullshitting yourself, is what I'm doing and is what I know gonna get me there? This is, <laughs> this is like law right here. This is law, this is law. This is why so many people, they'll graduate, they'll get a good job or whatever, and 20 years down the line, they're questioning why they still have financial issues, why there's, there's problems in their marriage, why they can't travel, why they don't have time, blah, blah, blah. Because you didn't ask yourself, is what I know going to get me there? Is this the vehicle that I should be using to get there? People stop at the, I got a job. You can't stop there. That's the beginning of it. That's the beginning of it. As a responsible human being, you have to ask yourself, what do I want? Is this going to get me there, right? Because you could be really good at things that don't matter. And this is another point uh, that I want to talk about in the video. You could be really good at things that don't matter. And most people are. Really good. And sometimes I, <laughs> it's kind of a side note, but I, there's a lot of people that are like, they're really good at knowing sports and stats and all this other crap and politics and social media and blah, blah, blah. All uh, this junk, right? But they're not doubling down on the shit that matters. So you're really good at shit that doesn't matter. You know shit that doesn't serve you. And then you neglect the things that matter, right? The knowledge and the education, the experience and the skill sets that you actually need to make a difference in your life. So I never got into, that's why I go, in, every time I go out with any friends or coworkers, any of that, any of that stuff, I, I don't know anything about sports. I don't know anything about alcohol. I don't know about all these different restaurants and all the stuff that exists because I skipped all that. I skipped it because I didn't care about it. I didn't have the time to be focusing on that. That's, that doesn't matter. That was taking away from the important stuff, right? But to get back to the point, you can get really good at stuff that doesn't matter. It's so easy to do, right? If you're really good at making holes in the ground, right? Let's say you you have the, the record for being able to dig the best, deepest, and prettiest hole in the ground. It took you a year to do it. You won a record, blah, 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 right? At the end of the day, what did you accomplish? You worked really hard at putting a hole in the ground. I want you to think about that. That's, a, that's, a, that's an extreme example. But think about that. If you're really good at making a hole in the ground, you accomplish nothing. Right? So, was working hard the secret? No. And if you were trying to, you know, be financially free or you know, get out of debt or buy this pretty car and this big house and travel, is, is making holes in the ground going to do that for you? No. I'll tell you why not. Because that's not valuable in the marketplace. So this is critical. This is why you have to understand what it is you're doing in your skill sets and make sure that you're focusing on becoming more well-versed and 
honing in your skill sets in areas that matter that are going to bring you what you want. Working hard is not the secret, right? It's not the secret. It's understanding what you want and working in the right areas. Don't be the guy that focuses on making holes in the ground and then wonders why he doesn't have the things that he wants. I've been busting my ass for 20 years. Ah, oh, life is hard. No, your life is hard because you made it hard on yourself by not being aware enough or responsible enough, right? And not changing gears when you need to change gears. And it's okay if what you do for work or business or whatever, the skill sets that you have, might not make you the most money, right? That's, that's fine. But understand if that, if that is the case or not. And if, that's, and if you're chasing you know, financial progress and you have these goals that require larger amounts of money, right? And you have this lifestyle that you want that requires that. Well, then you also need to learn other skill sets that you can leverage and rely on to fill in the gap for the things that won't bring you that income. All right? It's like people are super passionate. Like you go to school and be, you could be a teacher, right? Nothing wrong with being a teacher. But some, pos some positions, some careers don't pay that well. No matter how hard you work, no matter how good you are at it, no matter how long you, you do it for. Because you get paid based off of what the value you bring, the problems that you solve, right? And the difficulty in replacing you. And ultimately what you're worth in the marketplace. So that's why you have to reflect on what it is you do and what it is you know to see if it's difficult to replace you, right? And what that's worth in the marketplace. It would be silly for someone working in retail as a sales associate, right? Making 10 bucks an hour, stocking shelves in the back room to go to their boss after three years of working in that store and say, hey, I've been here for three years. I want to make $20 an hour. And what that person's going to do, they're going to laugh in your face and go, they're going to fire you. Why? Because that's a joke. Because you can easily be replaced. There's a stack of applications of people that want your job and that will do it for less. So if you spend 20 years in the stock room, you don't have the right to ask or wonder why you're not progressing financially because your skill sets are not aligned. That's not the platform. That's not, you don't have the skill sets required to raise your value, to solve larger problems and to increase your value in the marketplace. So this is why the video is about staying in your strength zones, understanding and being aware if those strength zones and those skill sets that you have are going to serve you and if they align with where you're trying to get to and if you're using the, the proper vehicle to get you where you want to be. These are all questions you have to ask yourself. These are all questions that I ask myself, right? This is so, so, so important. And the sooner in life you ask yourself this, the better. Because you wouldn't have wasted as much time and money. And you would have skipped a lot of frustration in, you know, dealing with circumstances and situations that you deal with because you want to focus on the right areas, right? There's a, the two most important things in the world you need to ask yourself is, what do I want? And is what I'm doing going to get me there? That's it. That's literally, literally it. But uh, I hope you guys got something out of that video. For this video, I should say. I think this is so important. Um, I wanted to include that here. Um, hopefully, most of you guys watching this are earlier in life. And you could make these distinctions, ask yourself these questions, develop this awareness earlier on because it's only going to serve you. A lot of the problems we have in this world are due to lack of awareness. And if I can, I want to contribute, add some value and, and possibly help steer someone in a better direction that has served me um, in the case that they may be missing some of the puzzle pieces, right? And if you're younger and you ask yourself these questions that I mentioned in this video and you reflect on this stuff, you might just put your compass at true north, right? Where you would have been going south for a long time. Only to realize later on, shit, I'm not where I want to be and I'm not really that close. I don't know what I need to do. 
but this isn't working for me. I'm busting my ass and nothing's changing. Awareness is everything. But I uh, hope you guys got something out of that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Let me know what you think. Bye. -bye.